Hello friends, this video is intended for those residents who have confusion in understanding the primary union for fractures. So this video explains the basics and some examples have been shown to make things clear. So what is primary fracture healing? So the primary fracture healing is the one in which we approximate bone to anatomical alignment and then the healing occurs without any callus formation. Unlike the secondary healing which happens with callus formation, the primary healing takes very short time. Usually the union is evident within few weeks. And the good thing is that, that the bone that has been formed in primary union is the lamellar bone. While in case of secondary fracture healing, it is spongy bone which is going to get remodeled into lamellar bone and you know the lamellar bone is definitely a stronger bone so union that is going to occur in primary bone union is definitely a stronger union and therefore where the anatomical restoration is very important we aim for the primary union by using compression plating at the fracture site and in secondary fracture healing there occurs the callus formation and it is the natural way of healing of bones the primary union is not the natural way of healing it is a surgical process in which we induce the union without any callus formation and in secondary healing there is going to be callus formation because of the micro motion at the fracture site so what are the prerequisites for primary fracture healing so there should be bone to bone contact that is very important why because because bone to bone contact brings the Harveysian canals approximated with each other or you can say the osteonal units Os ostion is the basic functional unit of the bone it contains the Harveysian canal the surrounding osteocytes the osteoblast and their blood supply so if osteons are aligned they are going to create the bone by primary union and the construct should be rigid and biomechanically strong that means you need to gain maximum compression at the fracture site and there should be appropriate number of screws proximal and distal to the fracture and a bone should be biologically active and there should not be any combination if combination is there definitely you are not able to achieve the anatomical reduction and if you are going to achieve the anatomical reduction then definitely you are going to hamper the biology of the bone so in case of combination you should not aim for the primary union then the secondary union is the option in primary union we want a rigid construct but when it should be avoided in case of comminuted fractures i've told you and when the reduction is not anatomical then definitely you have to go for flexible construct because if reduction is not anatomical then definitely you are not going to approximate the osteonal units and that can result in non-union so it's better to give some amount of micro motion at the fracture site if the reduction is not anatomical so that there is some callus formation so what is the mechanism of primary healing so the mechanism can be contact healing and gap healing so contact healing occurs when there is less than 0.1 millimeter gap at the fracture site or you can a negligible gap at the fracture site and gap healing is also the component of primary healing but here the gap can be up to one millimeter but not more than one millimeter minor variations can occur the overall gap should not be more than one millimeter so if there is full contact that means negligible gap or you can say less than 0.1 millimeter gap then what will happen the osteonal units they get approximated with each other like this and the healing process occurs by cutting cones cutting cones is a unit which is led by the osteoclast cells and there are osteoprogenic cells osteoblasts and their blood supply that migrate across the fracture sites or you can say the osteonal units and side by side they deposit the lamellar bone so remodeling and bone formation occur simultaneously that means the bone that is going to form along the fracture site is going to be a cortical bone or lamellar bone without the need for remodeling and therefore there will be healing without any callus formation and now suppose if the gap is around one millimeter what will happen the osteoclast will be active at the fracture site they will create space for the osteoblast and osteoprogenitor cells and bone formation will again occur but it will be orthogonal to the axis of the bone that means if this is the axis of bone in case of contact healing the bone formation was in this direction but here the bone will form at approximately 90 degree to the axis of the bone so the bone formation will occur in periphery again it will be a lamellar bone and what will happen this lamellar bone which is organized orthogonal will get resorbed and new lamellar bone will be deposited along the axis of the bone so the bone formation will occur in this direction first that is orthogonal and then it will be gradually converted into a lamellar bone that is in line with the bone so that will be the process of gap healing so if the contact is less than 0.1 millimeter you will have straight bone formation but if it is around one millimeter then you will have bone formation orthogonal that will be gradually converted into a lamellar bone in line with the bone axis so suppose this is a fracture in which we are aiming for primary union what will we do will reduce the fracture anatomically you see this faint fracture line is now visible that means we have reduced the fracture anatomically and the gap is less than 0.1 millimeter 
so definitely we are going to achieve primary union without callus formation in this case so this was the immediate post operative x ray now you see the fracture has been anatomically reduced there is some small fragment lying here but most of the bone is in well contact so the healing should occur by primary union as you see this small defect here because of that small fragment so we'll see how it will progress and this is one and a half month post operative radiograph you see how fast it is there is no callus formation and you can see bridging bone both in AP and lateral views. You see the fracture is almost invisible now. Now this example. You see what surgeon has done. He has fixed the humerus shaft fracture but in an attempt to gain compression at the fracture site, he has slightly distracted the fracture site on the opposite cortex. Now you see here there is no gap but here there is a gap of around 1 millimeter. So this cortex should heal by contact healing that means there is no gap and this should heal with gap healing that means there will be some bone formation orthogonal to the fracture site now we see see there is no callus formation here but you see small prominence here this bone is actually the lamellar bone which is orthogonal to the fracture site because there was a small gap at the fracture site here again it is now more prominent you see there's some bone formation here this is not callus this is lamellar bone but orthogonal to the axis of the bone now what will happen now this part should have union and this part should get converted into the lamellar bone that is in line with the axis of the bone you see this is the follow-up radiograph the bone that was prominent here has now been resolved and lamellar bone which is in in line with the axis of the bone has been deposited so in cases when you are not able to achieve the anatomical reduction avoid any rigid concept because the fracture will not heal with primary union rather contrary the bone ends are going to resolve and the gap at the fracture site is going to be more and this will lead to early failure of the fixation so whenever gap is there avoid rigid fixation here also this you see the surgeon has tried to fix the humerus shaft with locking plate he has achieved good compression at the fracture site but you see on the lateral radiograph there is some gap at the fracture site again you see there is some bone formation orthogonal to the axis of the bone on, while on the anterior side you see there is smooth bone formation which is not prominent because there was no gap while here there was a gap so therefore some bone which is orthogonal to the axis of the bone has been formed so this part is going into gap healing while this part is going into contact healing here the surgeon is not able to reduce it anatomically and the construct is too rigid so in such cases when you are not able to reduce the fracture anatomically what you can do you can use a longer plate and avoid displacement of screw in this zone so some micro motion will happen and that will result in callus formation and the plate will have long length and proximal fixation and distal fixation that will prevent early failure so you see the callus formation has occurred but it has failed to unite why because the construct is too rigid for this kind of fixation whenever anatomical reduction is not possible go for a longer plate and there should not be any screw near the fracture site. I hope that clarifies the doubt about the primary union. If you have any queries, just put those in comments. Thank you.